All right. Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is not a video that I want to make at all by any means, uh, but it's an absolutely a video that I need to. Um, for one, for me, for me, I'll explain that later, but mainly it's for all of you. Um, I think it's absolutely fucked uh, that I haven't said anything yet about this. Um, I've held my tongue for a while. Um, I actually filmed a, a video a few months ago, actually right after Suicide Forest, explaining everything, but I was so emotionally charged up that night um, that I was like, this should never go on the internet. Um, so I decided to go, hmm, let's take a breather, let's bring it back. But at the end of the day, it's been eating at me every single day since this has happened because I haven't told you all. And in my opinion, uh, it's a really shitty, shitty thing to do that I would like to apologize for not addressing sooner. Um, because all of you, I'm assuming, have spent a decent amount of your life watching this channel or these videos or TFIL videos or anything like that. And you deserve to know what happened and to pretend as if nothing ever happened and everything's all good and fine and dandy and the universe is made of fucking rainbows and chocolate is bullshit and not the way this should be handled at all. So my goal tonight is to sit here and give you all of the information, everything that you could ever want to know about what happened and why genuinely I feel betrayed, heartbroken, bamboozled, wh whatever you wanna fucking call it, et tu brute, knife in the fucking back. I'm gonna explain it all, but I wanna give you all the information because I want you to form your own opinion on everything. And also, without all the information, it may not make sense or you might be like, Elton, you're fucking overreacting, you're being a bitch. But when you have all the pieces together, I think you all can make your own, um, I don't know, conclusion. I also say, if you're gonna be looking at papers, it's not a script. This is legitimately notes on fucking everything. So that way I can stay moderately on track because if you just let me rant and rant, I'm gonna get heated, I'm gonna get way too emotional and I'll probably say some shit that I shouldn't say and this is my way of staying on pace, okay? Two things being said, I want to tell you this right now, video is not monetized, completely turned off, I can say whatever the fuck I want, curse all I want, it doesn't matter. This isn't about views, this isn't about money, I don't give a fuck. This is about you guys and you knowing what happened, because I feel like as though you need closure. Also, legally, I'm saying this right now, legally, every single thing I say in this video, and I'm being as serious as I can right now, this is the only time I promise I'll be this serious, can be legally factually proven in a court of law under oath under a lie detector test with not only receipts but I got the whole fucking IRS bank vault full of information to prove every single thing that I am saying in this video because I'm really really tired of having people lie about me and I just fucking take it it sucks I did three years of it I did three years of hate and death threats for shit I never fucking did and I finally said something, and boy, oh boy, was it a blessing when they reached out to help fix that. I'm not going through that again. Okay, serious part's over. With that being said, this breaks my heart. He was my best friend for seven years, roughly, okay? Roughly seven years, absolute best friend. He was there when I proposed. Uh, I had a groomsman box ready for him uh, until he did what he did. And then now he's not in my wedding or even invited to my wedding. This sucks, okay? So whatever heartbreak you feel about him not being on the channel anymore, TFL or Overnight or Haunted Homies, trust me, it hurts a lot more, okay? I'm gonna try not to cry right now. Uh, this is the only second time I've ever talked about this out loud. It fucking sucks, okay? That's, that's that. That's why I have this, so I can stay on track, okay? The other main thing here about giving you all closure and explaining everything is I, Genuinely, I am very afraid of him spreading lies. I've already seen a few things about him spreading misinformation here and there about me, things that aren't true, things that I'm hearing from people extremely close to me, 
and TikTok clips and all these different things. And I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. Now, whether he's lying intentionally, or just doesn't know better. I don't know. Either way, it's not cool. The other thing is I have been on the other side of this exact situation when he left another channel similar in content to mine. Probably know what I'm talking about. And when that happened, there was a lot of slander that was going around. A lot of crazy shit he was telling me. And because he was my friend, I believed him. And I believed him for years and years and every single thing he told me. And since this has happened, I've had plenty of time, lots of months, to reach out to those people and lots of other people throughout time and find out all of it was fucking bullshit. It was made up magical fairy tale shit. None of it's true. And the thing is, I was always asking to be like, is that, can you prove it? And he was, I was always getting these wishy-washy answers, but I believed him because he's my friend. Why wouldn't you believe your friend? And it sucks because I feel as though I ruined quite a few friendships over the years because I trusted him and never gave the benefit of the doubt to ask and be like, hey, is this fucking real? And I think a part of it is because I was also afraid maybe that it wasn't. And if I found out it was a lie, then that would be the end of that friendship. That's whatever. Here's where I go ranty and I, I go off track. So let's stay on pace here. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm not going to give prime any examples at all of what was said because fuck that. It wasn't true. So I'm not here to start right rumors. That's bullshit. That'd be insane of me to accuse one and then do the same thing. Pot calling kettle black. Whatever. Not doing that. Let me just say it was some shit that... If you understood what was said, you'd be like, yeah, fuck those people forever, which would explain why you probably saw me throw little jabs here and there. And there's a bunch of other stuff, non-social media people related that I was like, can't be friends with you anymore. It sucks. I feel really bad about it. I've reached out since. I've said, sorry. Uh, I probably owe a few, a few more apologies. Um, yeah. And all that shit that happened led to me getting a lot of hate and death threats, and more rumors, and Elton this, and Elton that, and I'm like, what the fuck did I, I mean, I kind of know what I did, because I was kind of instigating here and there. Anyways, we're getting off track, here we go. Back on the thing. You get what I'm saying? Okay, I'm pissed I'll about that whole situation. I don't like it. I don't want that to happen to me ever again. So that's a huge reason for making this video. I'm gonna set everything perfectly straight and clear and forward so there is no room for any lies or fabrication or manipulations or exaggerations to be said about what happened in this situation, okay? Because again, I don't, I just want this all to go away, dude. I just wanna make the videos on the Overnight Channel the best I can for you. I wanna make the videos for TFIL the best I can and for you. I wanna keep Haunted Homies going. I poured my entire life into YouTube and to content and to making videos and I just cannot stand to see another time where one person could plausibly throw a wrench in the fucking works and, and destroy the things that I've tried doing, okay? I'm a good person, whether you all m might realize that or think that or not from the videos and sometimes I seem a little dicky and edgy in the videos, uh, which I'll also explain why that happens. It's never my choice. It's just shit that happens, which we'll explain, okay. Ah, and the last key thing I wrote here, because I want to be extremely super fucking clear about this if I wasn't already, again, no hate. I think I already said that earlier. Please, fucking keep your opinion, form your opinion, keep it yourself. Don't spread any hate on any of his socials or any of other people related to him socials. Anything. You're watching this video, take it in. Sure, text your friend, talk about it with someone. I don't give a fuck, but don't fucking spread hate. Please, don't do that. Cannot make this any more clear. Do not spread hate. The guy that summons demons says, please do not spread hate. Thank you. I'm trying to make this jokey so it doesn't feel so fucking weird. Okay. Here's the first thing I'm getting accused of. And we're gonna go through the whole thing. I'm gonna try and make this fast, okay? I apologize. I just don't wanna edit this video. I really don't. I just wanna film it, click upload, and go. I've been accused of not paying people, which is insanity. I have paid people since the very first day, TFIL, New Zealand, Sam Colby, and Corey, after the trip was over, I got a brand deal that put me in the profit. As soon as that ever happened, I was like, oh shit, we made money on a trip. Everyone started getting paid, which is almost the inception of the channel. Pretty damn near close. Everyone has always been paid. Everyone gets paid to like the most extreme level that I can. I care more 
about paying everyone else on the team than I give a fuck about me getting paid because frankly, I maybe made some crypto investments a long time ago and I'm like, I'm okay. That's a side thing. I value everyone else and their income significantly more than my own. I'm gonna go into details specifically on how much people do get paid, okay? But I just wanna let you know that, okay? And again, that's overnight people get paid, TFIL get people get paid, haunted homies, everything, top to bottom, okay? You go on a TFIL trip, all expenses paid, everything, flights, hotels, meals, activities, transportation, I plan everything, I do everything, and you also get paid to be there. It's roughly $2,500 a week, give or take. Some trips are a little bit more intense, some are less, some are whatever. You can do the math on $2,500 a week to travel and get paid to travel. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty decent, but that's peanuts compared to what pay was getting done for overnight. Keep that in mind. Cool, fun stuff here. Um, okay, yeah, so. Again, everything I'm giving you is information that you need uh, for the end of this. And again, sorry, my emotions are all over the place on this one. I'm not really enjoying filming this. The Overnight Channel, TFIL, all of them. I run everything, top to bottom, all of it. There are some people that help with research and little things like that, like Ginger, my fiance, he's gonna be wife, um, little things like that. But as far as finding locations and paranormal equipment and exper experts, and just ideas and like all the different people we work with. And then of course, flights, uh, paying for locations, hotels, transport, meals, all of that editing, post-production, hard drives, right? Every single little piece of overnight, I do. And everyone knows I'm always asking for help, okay? And here's a fucking crazy thing. If you have ever like tweeted me a location, or DM'd me a location, or anything like that. You have sent me, even just one location, you have sent me infinitely more locations than Corey ever did. I'm gonna let that one sit there for a second because again, I could go through every single text message, every possible thing you could ever imagine. There was never a time, ever, where he was like, hey, this location would be cool, okay? And trust me, there was never a time where he's ever like, this location would be cool and here's the website and how to book it. There might have been a time where he suggested like the Great Pyramids of Giza. That doesn't count. That's not a rational, here's a physical place we could go investigate, right, this year without getting infinite amounts of government approval, okay? Never suggested a location. Never once was like, hey, I found this super cool new ghost tool. We should get it. We should try it. Never found anything. Never once found like a paranormal expert and was like, hey, this person seems cool. We should go film with them. We should reach out to them. Nothing like that ever happened with someone who says they are absolutely dedicated, right, to finding proof of the paranormal. That's what I say. That's what we agreed on for the channel. Never once ever, factually, court of law, I can prove this, okay? Never fucking happened. That's the level of involvement I want to make sure you all understand as far as my workload versus his. His is non-existent, okay? We are both on camera at the same time. We both do equal work there. That's a wash. Everything else, you can see the balance is tipping. I just can't stress that enough that for like five years, that's that's how this went down, okay? Um, ah, and here's the other thing. This is an important one. This is where you get, and sometimes you make videos go, Elton, you're being kind of a little, little shithead. Everyone always knows where we're going, when we're going, how we're getting there, and if there's any experts joining us or if there's any like weird ideas I want to try. Forever and always, everyone always knows. Queen Mary, possession. I texted everyone going, hey, I have this idea. I could bring these witches. They can do a voluntary possession and be 340. You guys cool with it? They all go, yes, right? Always, forever. If we ever agreed to go alone in a location, we agree to it. That's why the, towards the ends of the videos with him, you would start seeing me, us agree on camera because a lot of times he would agree to shit. And then when we get to location, he'd be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. 
And then that's where you start to see me get a little pushy because I'm like, what do you mean you don't want to do it? We, we planned this whole thing. They flew all the way here to do this. These people drove all the way here to do I If you were getting paid to be here to do this, I don't, I don't get it. Now you, now you want to back out. Like, and even, even small things like, uh, for example, the Dybbuk box box, which is actually literally right here. Everyone knew there was a Dybbuk box box. Everyone knew that. Right? Like, yeah, the big reveal looks scary. It's cool. But they, I was like, are we cool if I bring a huge haunted item with a bunch of other haunted items in it and we open each one each night of the trip? Right? That's another prime example. I told them it was a big divvy because they're like, what is it? I was like, big divvy box with a bunch of little divvy box in it. And we're all like, well, the divvy boxes are trapped and then the divvy box is trapped. So it's fine. And everyone was like, cool. And then what happens? Everyone's like, nah, we shouldn't do it. And I'm like, okay, at a certain point, I'm like, all right, whatever. You're doing this for the video. You're trying to show that you're afraid. But then at a certain point, you're like, wait, no, no, are we actually not doing this? And then I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, do you know how expensive all these were to get? Some of them were shipped in from like South Africa and Europe, Italy, right? Like all this. And now I'm confused and I have this whole idea, right? So again, that's where you start to see a little frustration for me in some of these videos. And that happens a lot and a lot and a lot. And then it starts to happen more on a severe, a severe scale. Okay. Again, important thing to know, but they're my friends. I don't understand it. I try and move on. I try and pivot. I go, okay, let's fucking focus on the investigation. I don't know. But again, I'm the one who is in charge of these videos. I'm the one who like paid for the location and paid for us to get there. And I pay Evan to film and I pay everyone to be there. Like I'm the one going, what the fuck? Like we have to make a video here. And ideally we have to make a good enough video because things were getting more and more expensive. And then that's where you start to see me kind of like internalize and panic and I can't figure it out. And it just gets a little, a little fucky, you know? And that's like my burden. Like there was never any respect there from him about like what we agreed to. And then him knowing that it, it just, okay. I think you're starting to understand the picture now because of the money topic and all that, you have to also understand some of the negative impacts that were happening on the channel. A key one, and I'm not gonna go into details on this, is that collabs were kind of next to impossible because a lot of the times, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to phrase this the right way because it has to be correct. Hmm. I have the phrases in a way where it's vague enough because I'm not trying to throw other people under the bus, but also in a way where it's like truthful. Here's what I'll say. I'll just make it simple because it's, it's, it's whatever, it's truthful and I'm not gonna drop names. Clouds are damn near impossible because he was always talking shit on everyone. Always. Like what I said, when there was an exit from another channel, it wasn't a peaceful. It was like, you know what I mean? A lot of talking shit. Other people that he would film with afterwards would be like, fuck them, fuck this, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm not going to give examples because I'm not trying to stir up shit. And again, I, I also don't believe any of it's true. But in my head, I'm going, okay, well, then we're never going to film with them if that's what you're saying. That doesn't make sense. So you don't like them. I don't get I don't get why if you don't like them, yet you're still doing this with them. But okay. You know what I mean? But in my head, it's just like I don't pretend to like people. I don't, it's, I'm all about being extremely overly blunt and honest. So that got difficult, but there were a few people that I was friends with first, like Josh and Dan, that I was like, no, like we're going to keep filming with them. You know what I'm saying? That's a big hindrance to a channel in a, in a community that I consider the paranormal community. And it's hard to be involved in the community when one half is like, Meh, fuck the community. It's very weird. Okay. That's where I'm leaving it. Again, I have all the receipts. So please don't make me actually fucking publicize everything that was said. Just let's leave it there. Um, then here's where it starts to get really shitty. In 2023, the entirety of 2023, uh, there was no reliability. He kept quitting. He kept quitting. And those are the ones on camera. Those are the ones literally on camera that he kept quitting. Those aren't the ones that like, by the way, on camera on YouTube, then there's videos on Patreon that 
basically not a part. And then there's the videos that we just never even filmed because he was just like, ah, I'm just not feeling it. He's like, I'm just not up to it tonight. I'm just like, I'm just feeling tired. And I'm like, cool. So we just like flew halfway across the country and rented a car and I was getting paid to be here. And you're just like kind of tired. And at that point, I didn't have like the confidence to just like film without him. And also I didn't want it to be like a weird thing. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's my choice. I should have just fucking committed to it. But also that's my friend and my friend's saying he's not tired. He's not into it. I'm like, all right, well, let's just get to a better hotel and, you know, let you rest for the next night. Right. So then you start having that thought process. So again, in 2023... Uh, I'm pulling, I'm pulling the exact numbers. I looked this up. 2023, we only did 19 nights of ghost hunts for YouTube videos. 19. That's it. Two of those nights, he quit early. Uh, Hill House, which you saw, and Sweet Spring Sanatorium. Actually, it's 18 because Suicide Bridge was filmed technically in January. Anyways, we're still going to count it. Okay? Two of those nights, he quit early. Then, we have three nights that he fully canceled. Fully canceled. Which means the location was paid for, everything was paid for, and he was like, nah, not into it. Again, keep all this in mind, because apparently money was a fucking issue, but, hmm, not that much, we don't give a shit about it. Now, here's where I think things took a pretty heavy turn. Um, and granted, everything I'm going to tell you, this is the first time I'm ever saying any of this publicly. The people that were involved in it all know this. The people that were involved in it all will 1 million percent for sure on their life testify that this is the truth and there are additional proof beyond just testimony that this is all valid as well, okay? In those nights, I did not count the Warren Charity live stream. You know that thing that we did last year that raised a little over half a million dollars for Feeding America that took me Two months of planning, not like two months, wow, no, like every single day for two months, like a long time to figure out how to pull up a live stream, get a motorhome wire. There's a lot of BTS that people don't know about, like how difficult that stream was. And it was pretty expensive to do too, to get a motorhome, get everyone there and like pay for the location, you know what I mean? Like things like that and equipment and malfunctions and, and marketing and lots of right fun stuff. So if anyone tuned into that live stream, you know, it was supposed to be roughly seven total days to do the stream. That's kind of what we agreed to because we knew the goal was to hit $666,000 raise, $100,000 every time adds one night. Do the math, one night's guaranteed, you have six nights, right? Seven nights, you start weird days, seven days, seven nights, something like that. That's what we guaranteed to. That's what we, that was what we promised to each other. We were even considering going up to 10 days. It was a real consideration. And, and, and everyone at the Warren Museum was mad chill and they're like, go as long as you want. It's a charity fundraiser, do it, we don't care. And I was like, cool. And then what happens? He quits. Some of you are watching and going, no, nah, I thought he got sick. Mmm. Mmm. Here's the information I will give you. Factual information. Man. The morning after, right? Not even 24 hours in. All of a sudden, not feeling too good. So we're having a conjuring house. We're having a sweet springs. So we're having a bunch of other spots. Not feeling too good. Okay, cool. It's cold. We get it. It's winter. There's no heat on. All right, sleeping on the floor. I get it. I'm there. Cool, maybe, but, and a lot of you were commenting this, which was really uh, interesting because everyone on the behind the scenes of the stream, like that was Big J and Evan and Ginger that were running it, were like seeing all these comments going, wow, so many people are catching on. Now, if you spent two months knowing that you were gonna do a charity live stream in a museum, sleep in the museum, all of this is acknowledged, it might be cold, it's, you know, it's October, it's winter, it's fall, and a lot of money and time has been spent into this and this charity is like aware of it and there's a lot of different things going on and all of a sudden you started to feel a little, eh, not great. I would imagine that your first instinct would be to like, ooh, we should like maybe take some medicine or hot tea or let's figure this out. But everyone was like, hey, you should take some medicine or hot tea or something else. But instead what happened was they were secretly postmating McDonald's and broccoli cheddar soup uh, from, what the fuck, uh, Panera Bread, there you go, that's the name of it, Panera Bread, right, when everyone's like, hey dude, those are probably the worst things you could be eating right now, 
why are you doing that? You should be taking medicine or anything like this to go in there and feel better. But instead, it was just more time spent in the motorhome, which is where the hub was, doing that. And then just like coming in and being like, I don't feel good. Yet, what they weren't aware of is that there were people that saw him outside totally fucking normal fine like no issue and then all of a sudden it's so that's a cool fun thing that i've been holding on to for a while um and that fucking sucked because there was nothing more i wanted to do than hit the fundraiser goal to hit six hundred sixty-six thousand dollars raise i wholeheartedly believe we could have hit a million and that would have been insane a million dollars would have been 10 million meals for Feeding America and all this. And we all, like, fucking, all of you that were tuning in, that were watching, that were donating, spent all of your time. And then you firsthand got to experience what I've been experiencing for over a year. Which is just like, man, I don't really care that much, I guess. And yeah, you might be like, oh, I'm scared. Cool. Happens all the time. We know what we're signing up for, though. You know, we had all the protection in the world, spiritually. We even had real security there, too, in case anyone tried to, like, swat us or people tried to trespass. We had real security. We had spiritual security with everyone there. Okay, I'm not trying to drag in the people over at the Warren Museum, right? Because, but everything was there. Every consideration was made. What are you afraid of? Cool. We'll have this there. What, what else do you need? Cool. We'll have that there. What else are you afraid of? Everything was taken care of. Everything was cleared. We agreed to all of it, okay? And that fucking sucked. It sucked so bad. And here's the shittiest part, too. If any of you even donated a penny, unless I'm wrong, I could be wrong here, but I never saw it, and I asked, so unless he lied to me, if you donated even a penny, you donated more than he did. Isn't that fucking crazy? Your own charity live stream event and nothing. Some of you might be like, ah, oh, but he donated his time. So did I. So did I. I also donated my time. I was also there. I wasn't getting paid to be there. I paid to be there. And yet I still donated $15,000-ish of my own money, right? And I also paid for the entire thing to be set up. And my hope was that when we edited the whole live stream down and uploaded it as a YouTube video, maybe it would hit like 3 million views. And if it did, I would break even. Right? It didn't. It has like 640,000 views, something in that ballpark. Okay? So, whatever. I took all the money, not all the money, but I took a majority of the money I made from Haunted Homies and I put it into the charity bank because so I was like, wow, it's really crazy that I made money. Haunted Homies getting to do something really insanely fun. Let's put it back into charity. Okay? Because at the end of the day, genuinely, I really don't give a fuck about money. Money to me is just whatever. You get Mr. Beast mentality. It's the same thing, but I'm just a way shittier version. Okay? That's that. Whatever. Whatever happened there. Ah, oh, that's my, my dog just scared the shit out of me. He just went out right outside the window. Looks like a fucking wolf. Okay. <sighs> yeah, that's what happened there. And again, I bit my tongue. I didn't say shit. I was like, let me just fucking do this stream. And if you were there, you saw I pushed as hard as I could, reading up names and donations and everything else. Also, every single guest that joined the stream, except for Jake Weber, was from me. I asked him to help to get guests to join the stream because getting guests to join the stream would help bring in new viewers and more donations. Same thing there. I think we had, I'm gonna get, I'm not, again, I'm not like perfectly on track, but I think around 20 guests, 19 were from me, one from him. And I think even the one from him was me being like, hey, can we ask please? Like that'd be super cool if he could do it. So even on that contribution of a scale, nothing was there, okay? And again, for full discretion, uh, he did not get paid to do the charity stream. Okay, so maybe that's why. He was like, oh, I'm not getting paid. I don't give a fuck about this. I don't know. It's a fucking charity event, dude. I'm pretty sure most people don't get paid for a charity event. I don't know, but I also didn't get paid to be there, right? So that's a whole thing. That is uh, not great. That pissed me off. Um, and now I'm just vocalizing that. What else is here? Um, ah, cool. Here's the actual money thing. Again, because apparently this is the, the big reason uh, hearsay uh, that he didn't stay with the channel or whatever. Uh, it's the only thing that makes sense because I was nothing less than a fucking great friend. And I'm going to absolutely get into that and I will die, die 
standing on that hill of the, I was the absolute best friend you could ever fucking want to him. Other than like some of the common interests that we don't have, right? But as far as like an actual spiritual, emotional, motivational friend, I feel like I was always the best person I could have ever been for him, to him. Anything he wanted to accomplish, I never was like, oh, dude, that's unachievable. If he had this crazy dream of something, I was never like, nah, dude. I was like, cool, maybe we could try this. Or if you want, I could probably introduce you to that person. Or you want to start that company? Well, hey, I actually know these people that do that. Oh, you want to, you want to ship this thing? Well, I actually have a shipping person. Do you want it? Like, I did not, all I fucking want from anyone, especially like my friends, is the best they can ever have. You have no idea how happy I am. And I don't think I've ever gone on record saying this, uh, but other than with Matt, everyone that I have seen gain success around me brings me more joy than any amount of success I can ever have. Okay. Seeing Matt, like the dude that I met via Twitter, cause he loved paranormal and would go to Sarah Gordo and Cecil become a fucking superstar. Dude, it's incredible. Sam and Colby being like elite level creators now, making monstrous things, getting fucking eliminated by Logan Paul in a briefcase uh, thing. You know what I mean? Like all, all of that was just in, insane to see. So even seeing old roommates have like incredibly successful podcasts. Dude, I love it. And I won't let anyone try and critique my character in terms of like how much I do care about my friends. Sometimes I show it in like a, hey, let's fucking do this because I have this mentality that life is very, very short. And if you want to accomplish something, you should do it now. And I try and push people to, to chase after those dreams. Some people do it right away. Other people don't. It is what it is. But that's the personality I have. Okay. So with all that being said, I care about my friends. I care about their finances. I have this very, I feel like a very good work kind of mindset of like, here's value and trying to pay people as much as I can. So let's, let's, let's do this. Cause again, this is written down to a T at the end of the day. And again, tax receipts and everything else needed to prove it. He made more money than me on overnight. He'll tell you otherwise. He'll absolutely probably tell you otherwise because he have, actually have no way of knowing because he's never asked. He never actually asked how much it costs to make a single video. I don't even think he knows how much most of the locations cost. I don't think he knows that Queen Mary was actually like $13,000 to be there because all of a sudden I already paid the Queen Mary and then I had to get this permit and that permit and then I got stuck and there was no way to back out. Probably doesn't know that, okay? Makes more than me on overnight. Genuinely, makes makes more, okay? Um, he was getting an average of $1,500 per night. Per night. And I also wrote that sometimes he was quitting two hours in. But he would still get the same amount. Okay. Uh, the math on that is $10,500 a week to go out with your friends. If you're doing it seven nights a week. Okay. And if you did that every single day, that's a half a million dollars a year to go out with your friends. And remember, I explained this. He doesn't have to do any work, no cameras, no location, no driving, no booking flights, no checking into hotels, no even trying to figure out meals, no offloading footage, no editing, no post-production, no notes, no thumbnails, no anything at all. Just show up and ghost hunt. And in the early days, it was like, sometimes we'd spend like eight hours or stay fully overnight to be there. And if you notice, the channel stopped staying overnight. Because again, I only talked about 2023 and those times where he quit early. I could go all the way back to Hoi Bachu. We all agreed to stay overnight in the forest. And then as we're walking in, it's all of a sudden we're not doing that. The reason why the overnight channel stopped staying overnight was literally because of him. Look at the Suicide Forest series. We were there overnight. One night we actually slept because we went to sleep at like six in the morning. The other ones, we just went all the way until 730 in the morning. And the third night I was there on my own and all my gear got cooked. Otherwise I would have stayed longer. Okay. So you have that factor. It's pretty decent pay. Again, that's not per week, per night, per night. It's a fucking lot. Okay. And again, if one, we, so there's plenty of times you can go on Patreon and see there's plenty of videos where we get like absolutely no evidence at all. Nothing. It's not a good YouTube video. So I won't post it. Guess who takes the L, but who gets paid? I still have paper location, blah, blah, blah. Right. So none of those repercussions are his. I can't stress this enough. I feel like it's a pretty good fucking deal. And also here's the other thing. 
Everyone gets paid like as soon as the trip's over. You know what I mean? Like once we're like, okay, we did 10 nights. I go home and I go, cool, 10 nights. Here you go. Do, 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 do. Everyone gets paid immediately. But me, I still got to edit it and get it up and post it. And sometimes it's months and months. And then you got this huge YouTube delay, right? And, and paying out. And that's if it even does well as a video. We've had so many flop lately. I take all the risk. Okay. Again, that's part of it. Um, so that's it. Yeah. I uh, wrote that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you saw us switch down to a two person team for a little while, that was because he was kind of like, ah, oh, it'd be like kind of cool if like I could make more. And I was like, okay, well, if technically if we go down to less people, I could pay more because then we have less flights and less hotels and less people to pay. And so we ended up going down to a smaller team because of that reason, which to me was like, it was cool. We made some good videos, but I also, I love filming with my friends. I love it. It's like why I like doing this. Like, I don't think I would, if all I had to do was film solo videos for overnight, I wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be fun. I like filming with my friends because not only filming with my friends, it's like the dinners before and the fucking 5 a.m. check-ins to hotels where you're all delirious and loopy and getting the fucking zoomies and trying to scare the shit out of each other. That's the shit I love, right? I miss that. That's my favorite thing. They, right now, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm in here by myself. I'd rather film with my friends, okay? So you have that whole thing. Um... Yeah, yeah, that's that's literally all that says. And the other, the other thing too that is also not factored in is like I also buy all the, the paranormal gear. I might have said that already. But yeah, I pay, buy all the paranormal gear and all the cameras. And when that shit breaks, right, that's on me. And then just full discretion, if and when a video does like kind of go viral, because I think around 650,000 views is typically where I hit break even. Because if you do all the math on the expenses of locations and insurance and right, all that fun stuff, that's where it is. If we ever get a video that does actually do like decently well and it makes like a little bit of money, guess what I do with it? I, I buy footstep trackers that I've only used twice because I think it broke and there's no warranty. And I buy Envoys and I try and make other ghost gear and I'm sure there's more stuff and all the other ghost equipment is in the garage, right? And I buy Panasonic's and the thermal imaging goggles we have are military grade. They're not like knockoff. They're like $3,000 military grade goggles because if we ever did capture anything, I wanted it to be indisputable Right? That it was like authentic, like not like, uh, it's malfunction. Anytime that ever happens, it goes back in the video and the body cameras and the vests and the helmet and the arm and the 360. And also the more cameras I add, the more expensive the editing gets because it's more work. Because right, again, same thing, more work, more pay. So that's always been the balance on the overnight channel. And I thought everything was fucking fine and dandy and good and cool and lovely and whatever. And then uh, also, Fun fact, that is why I, had, I did actually have to make the Patreon because like I was like, oh, I'm actually going in the red uh, in all these videos and maybe in three years I maybe will break even. And uh, genuinely, if any of you are a Patreon subscriber, thank you so much because you really saved the fucking channel. Uh, I just want to actually express that. So thank you uh, sincerely for that. And anyone who's ever joined even for like a month, uh, thank you. Uh, and again, literally if Patreon even also makes money, then it just goes right back in the videos. It's not even a fucking joke at all. Um, that's it, expenses, yep. Got it. Talk about down to the T and everything. Um, ah, okay. And with all that being said, and knowing how much he was making and my scenario and just whatever, like hopefully the video goes viral mentality, uh, I was always trying to find ways for him to make more money or encouraging him to. I, for the life of me, begged him. Lily was like, hey dude, please make reaction videos. It's free money. I was like, I don't want to put them on the overnight channel. It's just not super interesting to me. I spent so much time in editing, looking at the footage. It's just like, I don't want another thing to have to film and edit. I, you know, sometimes I miss uploads and I'm like, I already have enough. It'd be insane for me to add more. I was like, please do reaction videos. Everything's already paid for, right? There's no expenses. Like the video's already been edited. It's like, it's literally, it's free. It's, it's, it's like fucking breathing air. It costs absolutely nothing. And I was like, you want to make more money. You're saying you're broke. You're saying you're this, you're that. Reaction videos. And if you look at the reaction videos that were recently filmed, guess where they were filmed? In this room. Guess on whose camera? On whose tripod? Guess. Mine. Because I was still setting it up for him to make it fucking easy for him to do it. And it was all there. It literally costs nothing. Yeah, like whoever you want to pay to edit it, but that's an easy one to edit too. So it's like that was all there. And then whenever he wanted to make merch, I was like, yeah, fucking go for it. I'll help you. 
Sure, what do you want? Oh, he's like, I want to do this. Cool, here, person, all right, that. Oh, you, you're trying to do candles. Cool, do you want my shipping person? Because your shit's breaking and it's glass and it's really heavy and I know how to save you a shit ton of money. I, I was always trying to fucking help. So I don't, I don't get it, but it's just like, the work wasn't there. It didn't make sense. The reaction videos blow my mind. Like how much, like if money was an issue, how much money was just sitting there it was just it was crazy to me. Um, Okay, and then we would do overnight merch. We would do like collab merch. Again, I apologize this is getting so kind of financially shitty, but I just really want everyone to understand like what what happened here. And then when it when you finally figure out how we ended it, uh, it's gonna fucking punch you in your in your genitals, whatever you might have or not have. I don't know. Um, so. Yeah, we do merch, right? We do like Ouija boards, we do posters, we do things like that. We'd split it 50-50, but guess who did all the work, right? I'm the one who had to find all the resources and ship it and buy it and supply it and hope we sell out. And if we don't, then I'm on the hook. Uh, when we did merch boxes for like contests, same thing. We would split the profits 50-50, but again, who had to do all the designs and who had to do all the inventory and do all the shipping and returns and manage the team and everything like that. But guess what? I did it anyway. Why? Because we're friends and I wanted him to make money. Okay, I cared about him, he was my buddy. I was like, cool, I'll do some extra work, whatever, it's fun, I like making merch, I'm literally wearing one right now. You know, so it was like, it was what it was. Ah, here's another fun thing, we tried making an app together, some of you might have donated it. He wanted to hire his friend, his friend didn't know what he was doing and lied. Guess who paid his friend? Me. Guess who got sued? Me. Fun. Guess who never tried to help the guy getting sued out even though it was their fault? Not me. You get the picture, okay? Now, we go into Haunted Homies. Season one, big tour, fun stuff, same thing. Everything was split 50-50. I did everything. It was my motorhome, I planned the tour, I paid for every location, I did every contract. I'm the one who hired Ginger and Jerry and Jenny and one more person who doesn't want to be named, she just like saves out of social media, like Limelight. I hired the camera crew, Kyle and Marty, right? I did all of it. I did absolutely everything. I managed everything. I paid for everyone. I did all of it, all the insurance, everything, yet we still split it 50-50. Why? Because he's my friend. And I was like, well, we do this channel together. You don't, you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. I was like, cool, we'll keep doing it. That's fun. Um, Fun fact about that thing, I actually worked so hard on that fucking tour, I had an ulcer, didn't know it, it ruptured, I was throwing up blood. 20 minutes later, I was doing a meet and greet at Benson Graves Mill in Utah. That's a fun thing. That's how hard I fucking was working on that thing because I wanted to make sure everyone had a great time, okay? And I'm working my fucking ass off. And and then and then that's just whatever, okay? Haunted Homie Season 2. We'll go to that one because again, this is going to be a thing where he's like, I didn't make that much money last year because you weren't factoring in the money that I legally didn't pay you. What was from me, fucker? Sorry, that one slipped through the fourth wall, okay? Because th that was a personal one that I, I heard from very close friends of mine. Haunted Homie Season 2, okay? I liked Haunted Homie Season 1. It was fun, it was paranormal, spooky locations, a lot of work. But his dream, his dream that he told me was to be on SNL. Saturday Night Live, sketch comedy. And I was like, cool. If you want to do that, trust me. Let's push Haunted Homies a little bit more fun comedy. Okay, because one of our biggest episodes was like the prank one in Iowa. And I was like, people really liked it. It wasn't paranormal, had a little bit of it, but people really liked it. I promise you, if we push it, comedy, one, I think it'll work really well. Two, it'll open a lot of doors for you. People will see you not just like as a YouTuber ghost hunter, but as someone who is genuinely very, very funny. And at the end of the day, you're just gonna significantly better on stage. Okay, my idea. Also, 100 Homies Tour number one was also my idea. But number two, okay, that one comes around. I hit up Matt, I go, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, cool, maybe I have to figure it out. It took like four months, I think, maybe to navigate that whole thing and get it all lined up. I do everything. Okay, same thing. As far as what Corey and I got, right? Because take Matt out of it, Corey and I, equal. Equal on everything. But again, I was the one doing everything. You get the picture, okay? The only thing, the only thing we asked him to do is to leave notes on videos for what he wanted to be verticals and what he wanted to be long form and to do it, I don't know, within a reasonable time, which is, you know, you know when the episodes are coming out, so leave notes at least a few days, if not ideally a week before the video is supposed to drop. We got to a point where like we couldn't get this dude to watch a single fucking video, and then an episode would drop, and days later he would ask for changes, but the editor had already been paid, the editor was already moving on to the next thing, and also the editor is a really good friend of ours, and he just started like taking advantage, and we're like, dude, it, the, this video was fucking sent to you like six weeks ago, 
and now you're asking for changes days after the video has been released on YouTube. Like this doesn't make any, it was just purely disrespectful. And then he wasn't like posting clips anywhere. And again, this is all like contractually what he was obligated to do. There's an actual agreement uh, that's in place that he was supposed to like do this and do that because I kind of didn't want to do all the work again. And that didn't happen either. So you'll probably start seeing that like all of a sudden there's no clips and there's things like that. So again, I got screwed over, but again, he's my friend. I bit my tongue. I did all of the editing work. I did all the vertical notes. I actually ended up hiring someone else to help us post because he wasn't doing it. So again, more money out of my pocket. You get the picture. Okay. Uh, we're on the last page. Wow. 45 minutes. I thought I could do it in 30. I probably could have, but we're doing this as a one thing. So now you have an understanding of everything. Okay. He had no workload whatsoever. We were barely filming in 2023 for overnight. Yes. Yes. TFIL did film and some overnight videos were filmed during that TFIL trip. There was a two week trip, uh, I think 15 days perfectly total in New Zealand. And then there was another 16 days for TFIL in the middle of the year. Okay, roughly also gets paid for that. There was really one video where I hand him $10,000 in cash, which I, I did not count towards money paid for him because that was a gift. But that was a gift to be a good friend, which is looking back, what a fucking stupid thing for me to do, huh? The, guy, the person that was always taking advantage of me and complaining about money and I, like, I guess it got to me and I was like, all right, yeah, cool. Here's here's all, all the money because I think I got a brand deal. Um, and that's what happened there. So that's, 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 that's a fun thing. You have the whole picture of everything. How I've been optimizing the schedule and the crew to compact things down, to make it more efficient, to film less time so that we wouldn't stay overnight in locations. And then I had to like kind of pick up the pieces and maybe upgrade our gear and our cameras to make the videos more interesting because we had to try and film more in less time because I still want you to have the best video you can possibly watch and blah, blah, blah. And I kept adjusting and adapting and doing all this and picking up all the slack and doing everything I can and tagging him and promoting him and anything he needed help with, I was there. January 4th. 2024, this year, we filmed Suicide Bridge, uh, that video with Kelsey Davies, filmed that video. As of that night, my understanding and everything we agreed to was that we were gonna do roughly six nights in Japan. You saw those videos, there's still more coming. Six nights in Japan, two weeks, 12 to 14 nights in Europe, UK, Ireland, and France of filming, and then another six nights needed, right, in the USA to film. So six, six, let's just call it 14, 26 total nights is all that was needed to film for overnight for the entirety of 2024. Cause I was gonna do things in a different way. We were gonna kind of do like locations with more parts and then take little breaks just in case editing schedules got messed up. I was trying to think about how can I be as consistent as possible. Okay, that's, that's all we needed for 2024. I was even trying to do where we we're gonna do like March and April pretty quick together. And then we didn't need to do any filming again until roughly October because I knew I wanted more time at home and I was like trying to optimize the schedule and I'm gonna try and do this new thing for TFIL A to Z. So that's where we were at. That's all we needed to do. And we agreed to it. It, it was agreed to, it was locked in. I was actually waiting to book flights because I wanted to see if he wanted to stay longer in any location to see if he wanted to have someone join him when the work stuff was over. So that way he could get like a paid, you know, vacation, save a lot of money on flights somewhere and spend some quality time with someone in a really cool place. That was what I offered and that was like what I was waiting for. January 4th rolls around, okay? A few days later, I head off to New Zealand. It's a six week trip. Traveled to TFIL, planned, I have 40 subscribers with me the whole time. Here's the kicker. This dude has been what I thought my best friend for six, seven years. I already told you, is that my proposal? Spent a lot of my time with him. Traveling, great memories, all these fantastic things. Not only was my friend, he was also like my work buddy, partner, comrade, whatever you want to call it. You know, as far as haunted homies went and things like that, like we were partners. Best friend, work longevity. And then somehow does, knowing everything that you know, what I believe is like the most disrespectful, petty, immature, thing you could ever do. He doesn't FaceTime me. He doesn't call me. He doesn't send me a voice message. I'm gonna pull up my phone, I haven't read this since. 
he sends me a single text message. A single text message. It should be easy to find because we've had basically no exchanges since. He sends me a single text message, uh, January 28th, 10.30 p.m., that'd be New Zealand time. After, after years and years and years of the Overnight Channel, and TFIL, and Haunted Homies, and just being friends in general, and life events, and all he says is, hey man, just thought I'd let you know, because this has been on my mind lately. Which is crazy, because he's never said anything to me, and I saw him just, you know, not that long ago. I'm going to pull out from overnight and focus more on myself this year. The trips have been super fun. I'm just ready to figure out my own path. A text message. Not a conversation. Not anything. Pull out from overnight. Okay, and I say, all good. I figured it was happening with the more you were filming with blank and not contributing with Haunted Homies. And I said wild timing because I literally told Evan and Ginger last night that I expect to come home from New Zealand and have you cancel on over all the overnight trips. I just had this feeling. Okay? I did. It was a true thing. If you people that were on the Travel TVL trip know that like actually the day before that I just like expressed it. I was like, I had this feeling that he's going to quit. I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's just something in me that's saying that. And sure enough, that's what he does through a fucking text message. Which is like, okay. But then he never responded. He never said anything back. Nothing. He's avoided like all mutual friends and events. In fact, he's actually like accused his old roommates of like stealing shit that he like left here because when he moved out. It's just been nothing but like volatile, no response, no anything. And here's where like, I'm gonna take my personal side of it because like genuinely that is like the most fucked thing. Like imagine actually like dating someone for like seven years and giving them like everything you had and nothing but the best and always doing like whatever you possibly could to benefit them and their interest. And then they send you a, a text a text message as a way to quit, and then they don't, and then they ghost you. That's where I'll leave that, okay? But here's what, what really made me frustrated. He's never said anything at all about you, any of the viewers, the supporters, the people that like made the Overnight Channel what it is, the people that made TFIL what it is, that made Haunted Homies what it is, the same people that he wants to watch on his own videos, that he has said nothing at all about you. Not like, hey, do you want to do like a final, a final video? You, you know what I mean? Not like, a, hey, we should do like a farewell video or what do you think about this? Should we address it? Like nothing at all has ever been expressed about the people that watch this channel as, as early as I think 2021. I could be slightly off on what happened with like filming versus posting. Been watching the channel for years. Didn't give a fuck about you at all. Nothing, mind you, this was sent January 28th. January 28th. Think about how long this has been with no response and avoidance of seeing me. Okay, for the record, beyond the text, I have also emailed him to be like, hey, right, because even though he broke contract on Haunted Homies, I still paid him for Haunted Homies. And was like, hey, dude, here's a lot of money that I owe, blah, 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 no response there either. Nothing whatsoever has ever been expressed about, wow, yeah, let's make like a final video or let's explain it or if you don't want to do a ghost hunt again. Here's the other thing too, remember that Warren charity event that we did? People donated $2,500 each to do a, a charity ghost hunt with Corey and I. Didn't give a fuck about that either. It wasn't like, oh yeah, cool, can we let's still do the charity event? No, instead I had to go and email everyone and go, hey, I gotta give you full discretion. They knew first, Corey won't be there. He's given me no response, no communication, nothing about this, isn't a part of it. So you pay $2,500 to investigate with the two of us. I'll give you a choice. You know, because I feel like it's, it's the right thing to do if you were only there for Corey 
then I can give you a full refund. You were, if you were there half for Corey, I can give you half, right? And some people ask for refunds, but I can't like go to the charity and be like, hey, can you give me the money back? So I had to fucking front the money, right, to cover that too. But again, you understand like no respect, no regard for anyone whatsoever at all in any capacity. It was a fucking charity event where like literally all, he didn't have to do anything and, and basically didn't at all, actually did negative things, and then also bails out of the charity obligation that he had and did negative things there as well. So it's just like, it's just insane to me. Like, I cannot fathom under any circumstance how this can be justified. I can't. And the thing is, that's a lie. I can. I probably know exactly why this happened, but... He's an adult responsible for his own actions and his own choices and his own words spoken. So regardless of whatever other influence there may be, he's an adult. And this is what he chose to do. And that, at the end of the day, is why, yeah. I'm just making sure there's nothing else. What's, what's knocking? What's knocking? What a haunted thing's trying to get out. I'm in the room with all the haunted items. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm like super not happy about it. And I'm sure. And again, I feel like if I would have just made a video and just been like, oh, I quit through text. That's why I'm so upset. It wouldn't have made any sense. You would have just been like, all right, whatever. There must be something missing. I promise you, all my life, everything I said is a million percent true. All of it. I did literally everything. Anyone that's ever been on my trips or been on Haunted Homies tours like the original one or travel with TFL New Zealand, any of my crew, any of my friends know that I fucking work my ass off. And sometimes I'm a little difficult for sure, but it's only because I want the best for everyone. That's it. Sometimes I'm just a little stern with things, but it's because I want the best for everyone that's there. And at the end of the day, I also want the best for what you're gonna watch. Cause I cannot stress this enough. And I don't know if this is just like a weird thing with me, but I value time so heavily. So the fact that like y'all are choosing to spend even a minute of your life, your lifetime, your, you know, not infinite resource of time with me, I wanna make sure that you're getting the absolute best thing I can give you, the best entertainment, the, the best video, whatever it is, the most meaningful, the well edited, well colored sound effects, all the different evidence, like that's what I care about. Like I don't go out to film these videos to just be like, well, we're just giving them something shitty. No, I'm always looking for like, who can we reach out to and do this with and what crazy idea and what government can we get permission from? Cause I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the coolest thing you can possibly get. And just now that you know all that and you know everything that's in the past, you know that it's always been my, my work ethic that has pushed these videos forward. And yeah, for sure, again, not forgetting, he was my best friend for seven fucking years. Okay, him and Evan tied. Evan, I love you, okay? No more. I loved filming with him. He was fucking hilarious. Funny dude. I believed in him. Again, haunted homies. Fucking, we did a tour with Matt Reif. To, even if he's not our friend, one of the biggest comedians in the world. All those different things. To accelerate him, if you want to do sketches, I'll be just like, sure, you want to do this? Sure, okay, all this stuff. He's not in the videos anymore. It sucks, for sure. But from the bottom of my fucking heart, I hope that you can understand that like, I am always gonna give you, well, my computer just went to sleep and I thought it was a demon. I'm always gonna give you like everything that I can. I promise you. I will. There's still more videos from Japan. Overnight is uh, filming with Patty and Linda very soon. Um, going out to Europe, UK, Ireland, Central US, all those videos I told you about that we were going to do with him, we're still, we're still doing, plus a few more actually, because I'm not worried about someone getting too scared or backing out. I can just, now we can just go to any location we want anywhere in the world and like I know we'll just sleep in the fucking dirt if we need to because the whole team is like all about it and no one's going to back out for sure. So, I'm gonna look at this half glass full and say that I think like the videos may very well end up being better than ever before. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for me just adapting and trying to, you know, less people and different, right? Different workflows, personalities, things like that. But I'm gonna give you everything I can. Um, 
that goes for TFIL. A lot of cool stuff coming for TFIL as well. I'm really proud of. I'm traveling to every country in the world, alphabetical order, A to Z, with Ginger. We're getting married in two and a half weeks. Uh, you know, we filmed Afghanistan, Albania, Angola, Algeria. Like, uh, it's so funny. I can feel my body just like going like, no, because I finally vocalized it. Uh, out loud other than in, in the car in Japan after night three suicide forest. So yeah, it's a long video, but Hey, this is a channel that makes fucking super long videos. Um, so I figured y'all would be cool with a long explanation. And again, if you've spent tens, if not hundreds of hours of your life watching every video we've made, I feel like you need to just know big picture. I apologize if I overshared things that you maybe don't care about, but I just feel like it's a, it's extremely, extremely important. Um, yeah, it's super crazy because now I'm coming to terms with it because now I know like now that this video is out, like all of you will know there's no coming back from this. Um, and just, and, and just for the record, even if like I got a text a minute after this video came out, it wouldn't change anything. Um, because I've blessing in disguise because of this, I did, I genuinely reached out to a bunch of people that I was told this and this and this about. And I was like, Hey, is this a real thing? Like, no. And some of the people I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm so sorry that I never even like tried to take your side of the story. I just believed that this is a real thing that you did or said, and I know you better and I shouldn't have, but I trusted so-and-so. So, yeah, in the past few months, I feel like it's also helped me kind of try to mend some relationships, some friendships, some people that I care about. But yeah, so for sure, 1000%, no questions asked. He will never be a part of anything I ever do ever again. Anything that was filmed that he was still in, right? He'll still get tagged in old Haunted Homies clips. He'll still get tagged in. There's actually only one YouTube video left that he's in, which was something we filmed a very long time ago at Chernobyl that we held on to and then the war and confusion, but eventually we're, we're gonna drop that soon. So he'll be in that. Other than that, nothing else. Forever and always. That's it. I don't care. He exhausted everything in me, everything. And I just could never rationally ever be like, I'm willing to give him more of my time or energy or effort or, or positivity or anything like that. I would much rather focus that on the people that I genuinely know do care and contribute and match my work ethic. And if they see me struggling with something, they help. If they see me struggling to care carry fucking 20 chairs up a staircase to set up a, a haunted homies podcast in an abandoned building they help instead of just staying on their phone and pretending as if they don't see anything going on around them. Okay? If they, if they know that their friends and their roommates are editing their fucking asses off, working on their videos that they're in, that they're going to get tagged in, that go towards their career, they're going to help. Those are the people I want to be around. And I'm, I'm just, I'm too old now. And that's it. So, wow, an hour and three minutes. I wonder if I should just like make it like another like three minutes. Um, let's do that. You know, you're here. Let's just make it another three minutes because then it'll be 66 minutes and six seconds. And then I'm going to click record right then and there. That's my dog outside. So, thank you guys for, for, for being here. Um, I hope that the overnight channel doesn't take like a super huge, huge blow viewership wise because of this. But if it does, it does. At the end of the day, I like making the videos. They're, they're super fun. Um, I'm excited for like what we have planned. And like genuinely, it's kind of cool because now like I know Jerry and Evan and Ginger or whoever else joins are like 100% down for any ridiculous idea I have. They've all been like, yeah, we'll do anything. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, we trust you. We'll go for it. Let's do it. That's what the channel is. The channel is literally overnight. Welcome. Welcome to the overnight channel dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. Dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. It's like the whole channel. So, like, they all get it. And it's also overnight. So, they also get it. So, I feel like we'll get to do some really, really cool things. Um, that I think you'll be stoked to see. And we'll keep making these videos. We'll keep putting extended cuts on, on Patreon. And hopefully, YouTube doesn't keep demonetizing random videos of ours. That sucks. It's very annoying. Um... 
and Haunted Homies is, is continuing. Uh, yeah, we already filmed season three, episode one with Matt, Josh Wolf, and Michael Blaustein. We have the next episode with Trevor Wallace and Morgan J. Tickets will be on sale, I think, actually, like an hour before this video comes out. because I'm just going to unplug the SD card and, and, and put it in. So Haunted Homies is going to keep going. Matt will jump in when he can. Uh, he's got his tour schedule, but he's not like parting away. So he'll just be there when he's available because um, we film it in L.A. now. So, yeah, I don't know. Fun stuff. Just going to keep pushing pushing towards the dream and making cool things and hanging out with y'all. and That's it. It sucks. It's crazy. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm such a... The trips have been super fun. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Trips all over the world, fully paid for. Everything. It, yeah, you can't just like spend a few more nights with your friend doing the thing that you say you love so much. Doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> Love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.